Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I'm going to be doing a quick unboxing because, um, very exciting, my expansions for Warhammer Underworld Shade Spa have turned up. Um, Warhammer Underworld Shade Spa came out last year and it very quickly became one of my favourite games um, of that year at least. Um, um, and yeah, possibly one of my favourite games full stop. Um, it's really really good um i've written a review of it on uh my blog always bored never boring so if you haven't checked that out please do go and check that out as well um but today um i've received my chosen axes fire slayers and also uh my spite school skaven expansions and uh, we're just going to take a quick look at the chosen axes who are there looking very beardy um, yeah, for people who don't know, the Chosen Axes are, are Fire Slayer Dwarden, or sort of basically dwarves. Um, and they're, they're, they're wee naked dudes, wearing big hats and bigger hair. And um, the artwork's really quite cool. And he looks very, very, very annoyed. So, um, the expansion... Um, oh, by the way, I will just say I, I, I bought sleeves as well. 36 sleeves, that's enough for the uh, four characters that come in the warband and then um, all your objectives and your ploys and upgrade cards. Although you will have to keep swapping them out if you're doing deck building. Um, yeah, so you get four, four uh, little little dwardins. I'm going to call them dwarves because I don't even know if I'm pronouncing dwardins correctly. Um, and they are in bright orange and really rather lovely bright orange, which automatically means they get pushed to the bottom of my painting queue because anything in pre, uh, pre-colored plastic just just gets pushed to the bottom because it looks nicer than the uh, generic gray stuff or, or uh, and much nicer than than plain pewter or you know plain metal. So those those items always get pushed up the queue whilst whilst these poor chaps get pushed down. So uh, yeah, none of my Shade Spa stuff is painted at the moment because each faction comes in its own colour. Um, and yeah, these are orange. And the miniatures are really, really nice. They are push fit, they go together without any glue at all. And unlike um, a few of the other boxes, um, the, the skeletons and the uh, reavers, I found that there were occasions where I did put a little bit of glue on them to hold them together. These guys, um, I whipped it together without any glue at all, and um, they have gone together very, very quickly. I've assembled three of them, and I've snipped out um, the last one because I thought I would try and do it on camera and just see um, if I can show how easy they are to go together. But they're really nice. So there's one. This is, is our leader. He's standing on a giant skull and carrying a Mahu Siv Axe, which surprisingly doesn't have ranged attacks on it. You would think he'd be able to wallop stuff from a couple of spaces away with that thing. But yeah, these are all push fit. They are, um, you, if you look very, very carefully, you can see there's a join on the foot. That's where um, the feet are actually molded onto the base. Um, and then there's pegs on the, on the legs. I've just dropped him. Don't mind me, it's late at night. Um, yeah, and, and the pegs just push down into the feet and then and then there's a, like two sections that push onto the top. There's the head piece and the beard piece. The beards on these guys are massive and, and generally are in sort of two pieces on most of them. Here's number three. Um, this one, he's got quite a visible join on the arm. Um, that's something that, if you're going to paint him, you'd probably want to get a little bit of uh, green stuff in there, just to fill that in. Sally forth. Really good stuff. Okay, so uh, um, yeah, and then we've got we've got number four. And uh, you will notice as well, they have moulded bases which are in, in the same colour plastic, which is really quite cool. So, um, put that to one side for a moment. Let's see if I can very quickly show you how, how these chaps are going together. So, 
you get a cool little instruction manual. And we are building this chap here. Um, so it's, it's, it gives you the number of pieces that you need to cut the sprue. So 9, 10, 11, and then the base is 12. And it shows you that you put 9 and 10 together, then you put 11 on, and then you stick it onto the base. So that's what we're going to do. Or at least what we're going to try to do. I'm going to try and do it few, through the viewfinder. So um, you see there's the hole. And then we've got... Where are we? So you've got a peg here. So this hole will be for the, for the arm. You've got a peg here, which looks a little bit rude. Um, and, then, and then you've got the hole here. So what we're going to do is just push together like that. And there you go. That's that's those two pieces together. Um, we see the arm's going to come round here and then through here because it is a two-piece arm. Um, one thing I did find was that some of the pegs needed a little bit of shaving just to make sure they, they pushed on nicely. But this one, well, that's gone gone in perfectly, hasn't it? So that's just slotted straight in. And then you've got the base. Now the base has got shaped rec uh, shaped recess. So you can look on the base of, of the model and you see it goes that way. And in he goes. And there you go. That's how quickly these models are going together. You know, it's it's a minute to, to snip them off the sprue. Um, another another minute just to clean off any bits that might have um, you know when you when you snipped it if you had any little nubs left just to file those down um, and then they literally go together as quickly as, as I've just shown it there very very cool but of course you don't just get miniatures with these expansions you get 60 more cards for use in the game you get Character cards, obviously, you get uh, four character cards because there's four characters in the warband. Co-figure, who'd have thought it? Um, they are. So you've got Vol Oric Bane. I'm not going to pronounce these because I'm just going to make myself sound stupid. Um, uh, Oric Bane. Um, Oric is, is the new Age of Sigmar version of an orc. So Vol is, is Orc Bane. Um, he's got. They're very slow these guys as you would expect they've got short legs they're little stunty legs um, but they're using shields on the fence so they're quite sturdy they do quite a, quite a bit of damage and they upgrade they all upgrade the same way um, they all become inspired I should say by holding an objective at the end of the action phase and this is basically what I think um, these guys are going to be their strategies are going to be revolving around is taking and holding objectives I've had a quick look through some of these cards and there's lots of stuff um, to help you get objectives, to help you hold on to objectives. Um, and so, as you know, you want to be getting inspired, you want to be getting objectives, you want to be scoring points, you want to be doing all those things at the same time, you want to be doing it as efficiently as possible. So, uh, I see that being what, what the, uh, the Fire Slayers excel at. Um, here's his inspired side, he gains knockback, and um, his movement increases, and also his wounds increase. I think his, his damage output increases too. But um, yeah, that's an interesting thing. I don't, uh, I may be wrong, um, you know, I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments if I am, but I'm pretty sure um, most of, if not, it may be the case that none of the other models actually increase their wounds as they become inspired. Um, I may be wrong, but I can't remember any off the top of my head that do that. Mad Magrim. Uh, again, slow, but using shields for defense. Um, and when he becomes inspired, gets extra damage output, extra speed, extra wounds. He also gets a special ability Scorching Axes. You can re-roll one attack dice each time this fighter makes this attack action. That's pretty good. You know, he's already, you know, rolling three dice. Tefk? Tefek? Tefk? Flame Bearer. Um, massive Axe Bearer, that's what he is. Um... Right, yeah, so you've got a choice of two attacks. Um, so you've got 
a slightly less accurate but bigger a bigger damage output attack or a slightly more accurate lower damage output attack um, and then when he ins when he becomes inspired they they roll together into a single massive attack blazing axes um, that's three dice hitting on hammers causing damage output three if you roll at least one crit this attack action has cleave that is massive um, and he's and he's getting the extra move and yeah that's that's a, a big heavy hitter and then you've got fugil 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 grimnir fudge fudgy um, and he's the leader you can tell because he's got the teeny tiny little crown thing going on here um, and he has that mahusive latchkey axe, um, which is which big damage output to start with. When he becomes inspired, it gets even bigger. That's four damage. If he lands a hit with that, he's pretty much doing anything, isn't he? Um, and yeah, his wounds go up, his, his speed goes up. So um, yeah, that two movement is going to be a killer for these these Dwarden. They're, they're not going to be nipping all around the board, um, and you're going to want to be getting them inspired as soon as possible just to get get that basic movement increased up to three which is a you know becomes a reasonable speed at that point right let's have a quick look through what else we've got going on here i've been talking for uh almost 12 minutes and we've got a lot of cards here like i say 60 cards in total some of them are specific to the fire slayers you can tell that by the little symbol up here um some of them are generic and you can tell that by by these symbols here and that means they can be used in any deck um right so these are objectives, um, a claim retaken, score this in the end phase, if a friendly fighter holds an objective that an enemy fighter held, okay, so nick an objective. Grim promise, score this in the end phase if your warband took an enemy leader out of action. Yep, um, that's something you can do with um, old Fudgy with his four damage output, you can, you can take down a leader. Furious charge, score this immediately if your friendly fighter takes an enemy fighter action, action with a charge. So, um, there's, obviously there's a couple of things in here that involve, you know, punching other people in the face. And with the damage output potential of, of these Dwarden, I can see that. But I still think they're going to be mainly focusing on, on uh, objectives, <laughs> on taking uh, those objectives. Score this in the end phase if all of your surviving fighters, at least three, are inspired. Okay. Score this in end phase if all of your phone fighters made a charge action. So that's two. Two um, objectives that involve charging. So score this in end phase if all of your fighters and no enemy fighters are holding objectives. There we go. We are the Dwight in our hoarders. So there's a couple of things that are, are keyed around objectives. Score this in the third end phase if none of your fighters are out of action. Now I know um, there's a lot of stuff um, to keep the Dwarden alive. Obviously they get their extra hit point um, when they become inspired and that's going to keep them in the fight for longer anyway. But there's also, I've seen upgrades and ploys in this deck um, which increase their longevity. So I can see um, uh, objectives that involve keeping your guys on the field um, being quite popular with the Dwarden. Score this immediately if your leader takes an enemy fighter out of action. I think every faction has one of those. Kill, kill the big boss. Kill the big baddie. By the way, I'm going to have a quick look at, at all of these cards. Um, so if you don't want me to spoil them, um, I would say at this point, probably stop the video because I'm going to have a quick quick blitz through the whole deck. Um, but no, don't don't stop the video. What's the end? Yeah. <laughs> Activated runes. Each time this fighter makes an attack action, re-roll it. Yeah, it's pretty standard sort of stuff we've seen before. Unstoppable advance. Scores in end phase if all of your surviving fighters are in enemy territory. Uh, that's going to be difficult to pull off with the slow speed of... Of your, your guys, especially if you're going for objective um, capturing, um, because some of those objectives are going to be in your own zone on your own board. Um, brute strength. This fighter's attack action gains knockback one. This is a uh, restricted to Tefk, um, which means you know only Tefk can use it. Funnily enough. Reaction. During an attack action or ploy that would take this fighter out of action, roll a defense dice. If you roll a shield, the damage suffered by the fighter is ignored. That's massive, because it's it's completely ignoring the damage, but obviously you have to roll that shield to get it. This is restricted to um, Fudgy, the uh, the leader of the pack. Um, but yeah, that's, that's something that's going to keep him well and truly in the fight. 
Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, but the artwork on these dwarves is absolutely lovely. Um, really, really attractive line art um, and very, very bright, very vibrant. I really like them a lot. Grimness Fortitude plus one defense. Again, that's that's all fudgy. So you can get extra defense, extra, you know, resistance to dying. Plus two move. Very, very good. I can see that being a, a essential, an essential addition to, to, a, to the deck, just to make sure you can get your leader in the positions he needs to be. Warsong. This fighter is considered to be two supporting fighters when they support. Always good. Defiant Strike. During an attack action that succeeds against this fighter, this fighter cannot be driven back and makes this attack action. Now, this is this is important, I think. Um, this is Again, this is restricted Tefk, but it's an ability that not only lets you hit back at someone when they hit you, but it prevents you being driven back. Now, if you're building um, a, a deck around holding objectives, one of the things that's going to cause you a problem is if characters come in and push you off those objectives. So, or, you know, pushes you out of position. So, if you've got uh, upgrades that allow you to um, to stand your ground and stay exactly where you are, then you've got more chance of scoring those objectives, and that is good for you. Flurry of Blows, Magrim, uh, so range one attack, three swords, two damage output. That's that's interesting. Where's the Magrim card? Magrim's standard attack is range 1, 3 swords, damage output 1. That's actually increasing his damage output. That's the only the only difference between his basic attack there and, and this upgrade attack is that um, the damage output increases to 2. Once he becomes inspired, he gets Scorching Axes, which is a 1, 3, 2, the same as that. But Scorching Axes also gives you a reroll. What am I missing here, guys? What am I missing? That card I would say is utterly pointless um, yeah okay you get an additional one damage output if if you're not inspired but as soon as you become inspired um, I don't know surely there's got to be other upgrades that are more um, that have a, a more long-lasting effect and which um, are more powerful I don't know maybe it may you know my initial impression on opening this deck and looking at it is that 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 card isn't going to see a lot of use. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe someone can can point out where what something I'm missing there. Great swing. Um, okay, that's just um, you, you get a slightly lower uh, lower. I think his his standard attack Vol's standard attack was was with hammers. So he's he switches to swords, but he's now attacking everybody. So he's just going crazy, swinging those axes everywhere. Ah, now that is very cool. That is a range three attack. Okay, it's got low damage output, but if you're sitting on an objective and you don't want to come off that objective, chucking your axe at people, that's a great thing to do. Um, and that's, obviously you can do multiple attacks in, in, your, in a turn if you're not charging. So, and, and on a critical hit, it does an extra damage. Um, that's very cool. Um, range is good, especially with, with people who are moving as slowly as these, these Dwarden are. I mean, with their standard move of two, the ability to move two spaces and then lob your axe at someone another three spaces away. That's brilliant. I would say, okay, it's, it's restricted to Magrim. It only, it's only going to work on that one guy, but I would say that's, a, that's an essential addition. Um, okay, and now we're into um, generic upgrades. Anybody can take these upgrades. Um, so even though it's got a got a Dwarden picture on it here, um, anybody can get these. When this fighter makes a charge action, increase the move characteristic by one. Okay, that's again, that's a really great card. For I can see where they've put um, a Dwarden picture on there. It's kind of like, yeah, you want to use this card for your Dwarden. Light armor rolls of crits on a defense die are no longer a success for this fighter. Roll an extra attack dice when this fighter makes an attack action. I would never put that on one of my own people. Um, when you're defending, you're, off, you're all, almost always rolling less dice than the attacker. The attacker usually has dice superiority, um, and you're rolling your, your shields to reduce the, the 
the, the, the attacks. Um, but a crit, if you roll a crit as a defender and your opponent and the attacker doesn't roll any crits, you win automatically, um, regardless of how many other hits they 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 land on you. Um, losing the ability to do that, losing that one option to kind of win on the crits, just seems too much of a loss um, to gain that extra attack dice when you when you're attacking. I mean, maybe if it's the last turn and you've got no one who's going to attack you and you need to do a really big hit um, you might want to use it but is it worth taking up a slot in your deck for something that's that situational i would never want to lose the ability to to roll crits on my defense i just, just wouldn't want to do it this fighter can only be driven back by a critical hit again that's another card that's great for anyone sitting on an objective and i think that's what dwarvins are going to be doing Vampiric Weapon. When this fighter takes an enemy fighter out of action, remove one wound token from this fighter. Another good thing for keeping your Dwarven alive. The Blazing Key. Every expansion has had one of these. Um, it, it gives you glory points for holding a specific objective, in this, in this case Objective 3. Um, I'm guessing each expansion will have one, one key to hold a different objective. I uh, know that each expansion also has one of these Cataphrane relics. Um, if you've got all six expansions and you get all six relics and you can put them all in, in your deck, but that you're taking up a lot of a lot of your upgrade slots on these and you kind of need to load them all up onto the same guy um, because you, it gets a, a cumulative benefit. So by the time you've got six, you're getting, you get glory points, but um, uh, which you actually use it as an action. You can just, as an action, gain four glory points, which is pretty awesome. Um, if you can load all six onto one guy, you'll probably win the game. But it's an all your eggs in one basket sort of thing. I saw this card before, and I love it. Second in command, if your Warband's leader is out of action, this fighter is considered to be the leader. While this fighter is on the battlefield, opponents cannot score objectives for having taken your leader out of action. If you play a lot of opponents who like to assassinate your leader, this is a great card. Um, stick this on your next strongest fighter. And all those objectives that they were hoping to score from killing leaders and that sort of thing can't happen anymore. <laughs> Light-footed. Kind of, uh, lets you do a push. Um... Rather than being driven back, you can, you can push yourself in another direction. Shifting image. After any attack action in which you roll a crit for this fighter, you can push this fighter one hex. Again, that's that's good stuff for things like the Duardin who um who don't have a lot of movement and you want to give them that extra sh extra shove. And this this is great. I saw this when I was flicking through the cards before. Um, Shade Glass Axe, you can use it in close combat, but also it's a range three attack. If it hits, um, the axe smashes and you're, and you're done for. Um, you don't get it back, but it's on a critical hit, you get plus one damage as well. So you can hit from range three, you're rolling two, two, uh, two dice for looking for hammers, and if you roll a crit, you're doing three damage output. That's awesome. To be able to hit for three damage from range three, from the safety of that range, I think I think that's a great card. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have to speed up because I've been talking for a very long time. Assassinate. Score this in the end phase if your warband took an enemy leader out of action. Not if they've got that second in command card. You won't. Um, again, this is that we're we're back looking at objectives again. Um, the way they um they pack these expansions, they they shrink wrap two sets of cards. And um, I kind of just unwrap the shrink on them before I went on camera, and um, so that they're obviously a little bit jumbled up. Dauntless, score this in the end phase if your fighters are outnumbered by at least three to one. Um, pretty handy if you're Stormcast and you're facing skeletons, because um, you're already a, a lot of the way there. Honest opponent, score this in the end phase if you played no ploy cards. That's an easy, easy objective. An easy objective. I mean, I suppose. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't decline to use a ploy card just to get that one glory point. But I've had turns before where I've got a handful of nothing, and um, and that would be quite nice to get a glory point for for not not having the cards that I need at that time. 
Making a statement, score this in an end phase if you hold all objectives, at least one in your opponent's territory. Again, that's something... Dwarves are going to be going for objectives, but are they going to be going for objectives in your opponent's territory? Um, this is a, a generic card that anyone can use, but um, it kind of works with the Dwarven to a certain extent, but, but not with their, their little legs. No remorse, score this immediately if one of your fighters takes an enemy fighter out of action. Um, with a damage characteristic greater than the target's wounds characteristic. Yep, kill them good. Make sure they stay down. Perfect planning, score this in the end phase if none of your fighters made a move action. If you can put all your Dwarden, again, this is a generic card, but I'm, I'm looking at these all sort of from, from the perspective of, of playing, playing Dwarden. Um, if you can um, get all of, your, all of your little dwarfy dudes onto the objectives they want to be on, and then just sit there for a turn, it's an extra glory point. It's quite cool. Precise use of force. Uh, score immediately if a friendly fighter makes a successful attack, using exactly enough damage to take their opponent out of action. Um, it's only one glory point, um, and you kind of just... It's incidental. If it works out, it works out. But how many times do you use it to get exactly the right amount of damage? And it's not like you can adjust your damage up and down accordingly. You're kind of relying a little bit too much on on luck and fate for that card, I think. Score this in the end phase if you hold objectives 1, 2, and 3. Um, that's a, a good card for Dwarden's. Check this out. Total Annihilation. Score this in the first or second end phase if all enemy fighters have been taken out of action. If you can just launch into attack and pummel them to death in the first two turns you score seven glory and then you've got a third round of just picking up whatever other objectives you fancy um it's i don't know how how easy it, how easy it would ever be to i think if you're playing reavers you could probably take out reavers in two turns um i can't see you taking down stormcasts in two turns uh, skeletons are going to keep coming back to life. The Skaven keep coming back to life. Um, the Dwarves, uh, the Dwarden, sorry. Um, they're really, really resilient. They've got those extra wounds coming in from being inspired and they've got a lot of cards that will keep them in the fight. I don't know. Um, if you've got... The Dwarden do have a lot of damage output. So uh, if, if I guess Dwarden's against Reavers, um, maybe... I don't know. What would you use it on? Trapped. Score this immediately if an enemy fighter cannot be driven back when you damage them. Okay. It's easy enough. Unbroken wall. Score this in the end phase if all surviving friendly fighters are in a single group. With each friendly fighter adjacent to another friendly fighter. Oh, it's just grouping in. I don't know how often... I Mm. Yeah, I don't know how often often I tend to group in that much. I mean, obviously, you want to group in to get your um, uh, support bonuses. But um, but quite often, there's usually, you know, my units tend to be moving out across the, across the board to a certain degree to, to claim whatever objectives I'm in need of. Living Wall. This is um, specific to the Fire Slayers. Choose two friendly fighters and push each of them up to one hex. They must end up adjacent to one another. Oh, that's quite cool. Yeah, that's a, that, again, um, as we know, Dwarden very, very slow. So something that gives them an extra an extra move and allows them to get into a position where they're supporting each other. Great. Berserk Fury. The first time a friendly fighter suffers damage in the next activation, roll the defense dice. If the result is a shield, they suffer no damage. Again, that's, you know, that's powerful. I mean, you have to roll that shield and it's... I'm not overly keen on cards where I have to roll the dice to get the benefit because... If, if you play the card and you roll the dice and it works out, you, you feel great. If you play the dice, if you play the card, you roll the dice and it, it doesn't go your way, you kind of feel a little bit like you've wasted the ploy card. Oh well. Indomitable. The first time a friendly fighter suffers damage in the next animation, they only suffer one damage. Okay, so that's, I mean, we've seen three or four cards that just soak damage for the Dwarden. And bearing in mind they also get extra damage, uh, extra wounds when they inspire. Um... Yeah, they're just not. They're going to stick around. They're going to stick around. Reaction. Play this after a friendly fighter's attack action fails. That fighter can make another attack action. We've seen cards like that in the past. Piercing stare. 
Choose an enemy fighter, they cannot make an attack action or a charge action in the next activation. That's great, he's got like Doctor Who combat eyebrows. Um, he's just staring at people and making sure they, they don't do anything. Slaying blow, if the first attack action in the next if the first attack action in the next activation is a critical hit, double its damage characteristic. Wow. Um, bearing in mind old Fudgy can can hit for four damage anyway. Um, imagine doubling that up to eight. Um, I don't think there will ever be anything in the game that, that's gonna gonna stand that much of a pounding. Um, no, I mean that would be overkill in the extreme. But if you're going for those objectives that say. Um, kill someone by twice as much damage as, as you need and things like that um that's fantastic the earth shakes choose a fighter push the one hex again extra moves extra moves treasure dust choose a friendly fighter push them up to three hexes they must end up holding an objective right that that's that's essential for the dwarden isn't it i mean it's giving them an extra massive move um so it's three hexes i mean you can get pretty much anywhere you want to go with that one um and then you know you end up holding an objective if, if you're playing for that capturing objective thing trying to get inspired um that's just all good things all good things for the fire slayers choose a friendly fighter and roll a defense dice on a roll of shield or a crit remove up to two wound tokens again um and even if you fail the dice roll you still remove one that's just another way to keep them in the fight the dwarven just they're slow but they hit hard and they stick around they're gonna they're gonna outlast the orcs sorry the orcs we shall not be moved friendly fighters holding objectives cannot be driven back by their first attack action in the next activation again that's that's exactly what you want to be doing holding those objectives sitting on the objectives holding them not being pushed around switch to objectives that are currently being held that's fantastic because it doesn't specify who's holding them either so you could swap an objective with with an opponent uh, or anything to which could stop them getting the the scoring a point it's, it's gonna put, put you in a position to get the objectives you need that's cool earthquake push all fighters one hex you must push them all in the same direction any that cannot be pushed this way are not pushed that's quite cool you can earthquake your entire warband into combat no time. No more power cards can be played until the next activation. That's fair enough. Trap. Play this during a friendly fighter's attack action that drives an enemy fighter back. The enemy fighter suffers one damage. Ready for action. Play this after you upgrade a fighter in an action phase. You can make a move or attack action. Legacy. Play this after an attack action or ploy that takes a friendly fighter out of action. Choose one of their universal upgrades and give it to an adjacent friendly fighter. Well, that's quite cool. Um, you could give it give the second in command card on so if your leader dies you've got second in command and then if your second in command dies you could pass on your second in command upgrade to somebody else again um i don't know how much benefit that would have um in game but it'd be funny tantalizing prize the first friendly fighter to take a move action the next activation can move up to an additional two hexes if they end their move on an objective that's a universal card but it's custom made for dwardens that's that's another one that I think every Fire Slayer team is going to be going to be uh, using. Fueled by Fury, you can reroll any attack dice for the first friendly fighter's attack action in the next activation. Death Throws plays card during attack action. Uh, if your friendly fighter is taken out of action, choose an enemy fighter adjacent to the target. They suffer one damage. Always good. Darkness descends. The first attack action in the next activation has a range of one. I don't know how useful that is. Um, at the moment, there are only two characters, I believe, that can do ranged attacks um, as standard. The Skaven leader and the um, Sepulchral Guard leader, the Skeleton leader. Um, there are, I believe, two upgrades that give you ranged attacks as well. There might be three. Um, so there's not a lot of ranged combat going on. Um, Darkness Descends will make the first attack action in the next activation have a range of one. So it just negates those ranged attacks for one turn, for, for one action. And um, I'm not sure that's worth its space um, in, in your deck because you, you never, you, there's, no, there's no telling that you're, you're going to need it. Um, 
there's not enough consistent there's not consistently enough ranged attacks in the game to to I think play have cards in your deck that play against that range strategy maybe later on I think um, I think the second stormcast um, unit might be more range focused in which case something like this um, would be beneficial but I think at the moment this is one to to leave out um, something for the future maybe speaking of something of the future um, next time um, I, I record something it will be um, a look at the spite claw skaven expansion for now i'm going to say bye because i've been talking for far too long and i need to go and have a cup of tea bye everybody bye bye <laughs>